Good afternoon, everybody. On the bench today, you see we have another beautiful Collins KWM 2A. You know, the last time we walked on the Collins, it was just the uh, dash 2, I believe. But today we have a dash 2A, and it is a very, very, very nice looking radio. A viewer happened to see uh, some of my videos and saw the Collins, so he brought this down for me to work on today. And I started on it early this morning, and with the repair that I had to do to it, it just wasn't feasible, you know, trying to videotape it and get this. Um, usually what I was going to do, I knew it would take about two and a half hours to go through, but uh, it was taking a little longer than expected, and viewer came back and I was still about halfway through it so he decided to leave it with me and what was wrong with it was J13 which is the power port in the back of the radio if you look in there you'll see the center pin is broke out and gone so he ordered the replacement parts and that's what I've been working on today so this is what J13 is uh at in the back of the radio he still it's still loose and replacing one of these is not for the faint at heart um, you know trying to keep everything in a line just like it was when it came from Collins which I had to cut the original two tie wraps here and uh, pour the old one out now if you notice this thing has a complete band around it that all these caps are sorted to plus some ground wires so it took you know a couple of hours to take this out and get it back in and keep all the wires you know packaged back nicely where they're supposed to be and get this band with the ground back in and it's grounded on both sides to the mounting flange so it takes a while to do and it is a nightmare even to get into it, you know, you had to uh, remove this brace that was up here just to get down there to it. Like I say, this is not for the faint of heart. I've uh, owned everything out. I got this in, got everything owned out, and uh, I decided I would uh, go ahead and test the power supply. But I want to show you this also. This is the station control and it is just in beautiful looking shape also it really really looks nice um, there's no necks you know I, I'm looking at it and I can't tell but I think somebody's repainted it but it's just hard to tell because they've done such an excellent job at it but uh, the face plate is just immaculate looking And over here on the other bench, we have the power supply. And uh, it is also just excellent looking. No scratches or nicks or nothing on it. It just looks good. This is the uh, 51, uh, 561F-2 power supply. So what we want to do is bring this up on the very act. And... Uh, make sure we got voltage and check to make sure the capacitors and everything are good in it so here looking at the schematic to test this power supply without the radio um, P1 which is the connector that comes off the cable pin 7 is your AC common pin 5 is your AC switch so what we're going to have to do is jump those two pins to get the unit to come on and we're going to go down to the uh, 275 volt DC on pin 1 and down to either pin 11, 10 or 3 and pick up our ground so we can uh, check to see if that voltage comes up if you're doing this at home and you're playing around with it if you're not experienced you know you do this at your own wrist that is plus 800 volts on pin 2 of this connector so you need to be very careful 
so I got our uh, voltmeter connected to pin 1 which is our 275 volt um, supply and pin 3 ground and I'll have pins 5 and 7 shorted and that's our switch I have it hooked to the big variac the other variac with the light bulbs in it is not enough amperage to properly run the supply so we're going to use the bigger amp with no current limiting um, that you can see we got built-in current limiting here so there should be no problem we just don't see when it is so we're going to bring this up look at our voltage and see what we get um, this power supply has a soft start relay in it so at about 65 volts um, somewhere plus or minus that we should hear the relay start to vibrate and kick in so let's go ahead and turn the voltage up and see what happens and that was our relay And there we are at about 275 volts on pin 2. So we're looking pretty good on this. Just like our power supply seems to be a little healthy. So, no problems. And we can connect to the radio and see what kind of shape the radio's in. Okay, time for the moment of truth. Did I wire the 11 pins up correctly or did I not? Well, like I said, I owned out everything. And uh, when you're doing something like this, take lots of pictures. Um, sometimes pictures don't, don't uh, quite get it sometimes in a compact place like that. So, uh, sometimes we draw out little notes and all the pins and which wires are going to it so uh guess we'll give it a try and what we should see is the uh should hear the power supply kick in at about 60 65 volts then right after that you should start seeing the dial indicator lamp come on and then after that we'll see the um meter should peg out and we'll let it sit there for a minute and then it should uh, start dropping back down so okay we'll start increasing the voltage so far so good and we're just doing it slow power supply kicking in and there's our meter light and you'll see the milliamp meter is uh, climbing and as she starts to warm up you'll see she's starting to uh, drop down um, normal current draw so everything looks to be in good shape I guess the next thing to do now is uh, we'll get the control unit hooked up get a speaker on it, the antenna have a listen check out all the controls see what's uh, you know how everything feels and then we'll probably go through the alignment on it which I'll probably do that off video like I say you know it's uh, kind of you know a quick repair um, the customer would like to come back tomorrow and get it although he could be uh, as far as next week um, just depends on what we find wrong with it so far I'm not finding a whole long, 
lot wrong with it. He does want me to check out the mic gain control. There's a little bump in it as you turn it right there. So I need to check and make sure this little knob isn't hitting something. Kind of what I'm thinking that it may have it, you know, too far up on the uh, case and it's catching the nut underneath. But we'll get that checked out and see. Okay, we'll move on. Well, as you can see, the uh, Collins KWM-2A, it's back fully working. Everything checks out good. Went through the service manual on the alignment. Uh, no problems. Everything pretty much spot on. Um, radio's in really, really, really good shape. Um, couldn't find any. Checked a bunch of resistors and all of them fall within tolerance. So, you know, I think the radio has been restored at one point in time by looking at a few things but uh it's just in really great shape anyway yeah you know i love to have went through the whole repair procedure and checking everything out with you on this but it just want a good time to do it um you know the the customer that owns it he wants it back as soon as possible and a lot of times when you're working on old gear like this and you're trying to record and work on it at the same time um a 30 minute job could turn into four to five hours you know so you can imagine what a four or five hour job would turn into you know just shooting the footage and going through it and testing it so this was kind of hurry up let's get it fixed let's get it on back to the customer so anyway uh, these are beautiful rigs I love them um, one reason why I don't do a lot of repair videos on the radios like the Collins and stuff most of the time the owner is standing over you with a shotgun so <laughs> you know he don't want to see no video he wants this radio and a lot of guys that own these things are so particular and watch every little thing you do some of them are even have a fit if you need to change a capacitor out you know they don't really want you to remove a capacitor they want that original capacitor that came in there in Collins like a lot of uh Oh, to me to repeat, okay. Like a lot of, uh, you know, vintage guitar amplifier owners, you know, they don't want nothing changed. They want everything right. Um, Greg that owns this, he doesn't seem to be following that line, you know, so <laughs> that was good. But, you know, we put original parts back in it that was replaced, and she's all ready to go. It's like I say, one beautiful piece of equipment. I love these things. So here's an inside shot for you calling lovers like myself. Um, you can see just how clean and how nice this uh, this radio looks inside. Um, you know, basically what we do, we go in, we pull out all the tubes, clean the, the sockets, the pins. You know, make sure all your nuts and bolts are tight. Um, make sure none of them's loose, about to fall out. You know, check wiring, make sure that uh, nothing is... Uh, rubbing too hard on on stuff you know just being sure that everything looks nice you know check out a bunch of resistors capacitors and stuff and everything is looking wonderful so i think uh greg will be very happy with this rig for just a little while and uh 
you know see how it develops on down the road see if any little minor things come up or whatsoever you know and address them then and, and see what needs to be done Here we're looking at the schematic, and you can see this is the uh, crystal board. It has all the crystals for your band in it. And over here is a, uh, a tube, and that's the crystal oscillator. And there you can see L7, 2.2 microhenry. This connection in between L7 and that capacitor, um, C280, yeah, C280, was loose. It had very little solder on it, and it was cracked. And that's what was causing the, uh, the oscillating. So I went in and resorted that, and I sorted several joints in this radio. you got to think about just how old this radio is. So, you know, if it was lacking a little bit of solder, um, back when it was built then you know later on down the line it's going to crack but i got all that soldered back together and now she's uh seemed to be working real good again guys you know i wish i could have spent the time to go through this and video the whole repair but you know time was a factor on this so you know the station back up and go and it's ready to go back to the owner so another beautiful old radio ready to be put back on there so the video I did have planned for this weekend was the ICO 315 um, single generator. But you know the Collins came in so I had to go ahead and jump on that. And up next we have another Collins in. And uh, the complaint with this Collins, this is the KWM-1 one of the very first Collins made um, receives good no transmit so this one will be here probably all week and the week after um, since you know my time is limited during the week so we'll get a chance that we can go through this one together and uh, make a video out of it but beautiful receiver a transceiver I mean this thing is just it is mint it always do me proud to see one of these come in the shop we've worked on quite a bit of these in the uh, the past and let's see what's on the band tonight Anyway, we'll probably take some time and we'll walk through this one and uh, see if we can figure out why the transmitter's not working. The receiver sure seems to be working real good. So, uh, I'd like to hear your comments down below and we'll catch you next time.